All right, here we go. Welcome to Physics Essentials video 1.4 on free fall. So uh, before we learn about free fall, uh, we need to learn a little bit about what a force is. Uh, force, the symbol for it is a capital letter F, is basically just a push or pull on an object. All right, uh, here are a few different examples of forces. Uh, you can have the force of Roy or a person uh, pushing or pulling on an object. You can have the force of gravity pulling an object uh, down towards the surface of a planet or something. You can have the force of friction, uh, which occurs anytime two objects rub together. Uh, later on uh, in the trimester, we'll be talking about the force of electricity. And uh, finally, the force of air resistance is actually, in the real world, actually a, a fairly common force um, that actually turns out to be fairly difficult to calculate. So anyway, uh, we'll talk more about forces in the next chapter. For now, what you need to know is that a force is a push or a pull on an object. And when you measure a force, you're measuring how hard the object is being pushed. Okay? Um, the force tries to change the motion of an object. Please note, how much force on an object is a, how much force is on an object has nothing to do with how fast it's moving. And as a simple example, if you stand up right now and walk across the room and push on the nearest wall as hard as you can, right now you're exerting a tremendous amount of force, but the wall presumably is not moving. Um, so, like I say, we'll be learning more about forces next chapter. Uh, for now, that's all you need to know, is that a force is how hard an object is being pushed or pulled. Okay, so moving on from there, uh, we say that an object is in free fall if the only force acting on the object is gravity. This definition is super important, all right? An object is in free fall if the only force acting on it is gravity. Now, a couple things. First of all, in the, in the real world, uh, there's air resistance, all right? So in the real world, free fall is very, very difficult to obtain because when you drop something, uh, it has to push through the air, and as a result, the air pushes against the object and slows it down, which is, you know, how a parachute works, right? Uh, it's why if you drop a piece of paper, the paper kind of floats uh, and doesn't just fall straight down to the floor. It's because air resistance slows it down. Like I said, air resistance is really, really difficult to calculate. Uh, it's something that even in the AP classes they do only a little bit of. Um, and so for that reason, we are in this class going to assume that anytime something is dropped or thrown, uh, that there's no air resistance. Okay, we're pretty much going to always ignore air resistance, um, which I know is frustrating because it is something that does exist in the real world, but we got to start simple. Um, and if you decide to pursue physics, you'll eventually learn how to do problems with air resistance. So in this class, air resistance does not exist. All right. So because of that, examples of an object in free fall include a ball that you've just dropped, right? If you drop a ball off a building, after you let go of it, the only force on it is going to be gravity, right? That's why it falls down towards the Earth. Weirdly, an object doesn't have to necessarily be moving down uh, to be in free fall, okay? Uh, if you throw a ball down off a building, after you let go of it, the only force on it is gravity. But if you throw a ball up into the air, again, the only force on it is gravity. That's why it doesn't go up forever, right? When you throw a ball up in the air, it goes up, but as it goes up, it slows down, slows down, slows down, stops, and then it comes back down. And that's all because of gravity, all right? So long story short, what this says here is that a ball is in free fall if you drop it, throw it up, or throw it down, okay? Really, the, and this is important, and it's something that I didn't write on the screen, and I wish I had, the only difference between dropping and throwing something is the initial velocity. When you drop something, it starts at rest, and then you let go of it. When you throw it, it the object begins with an initial velocity. It's moving, and then you let go of it. All right, so anyway, in all of these examples, the only force on the ball is gravity, which is why they are all, they're all going to move down faster and faster, and all of these objects are in free fall. All right, so Galileo, uh, an Italian dude uh, from the, oh shoot, off the top of my head, 15th century, 1500s? I might be wrong on that. I should have looked it up. Anyway, Galileo is an Italian dude. Uh, and he discovered that all objects in free fall accelerate at the same rate. And that rate is called the acceleration of gravity. We are going to abbreviate acceleration of gravity 
A subscript G. It's an A with a little G next to it. Most books in the world actually just use a lowercase letter G. Uh, I, for a number of reasons that I won't bore you with here, have stopped doing that. And I'm going to use AG to represent acceleration of gravity. Just know that if you uh, feel inspired to look in your book, the book does use G instead of AG. Um, but people will know what you mean either way. So here's what Galileo discovered. He discovered that any object that you drop, no matter what it is, whether it's a brick or a feather or an elephant or a Volkswagen, if you drop it off of a cliff or, say, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, uh, any object will accelerate down at the acceleration of gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. For simplicity, we're going to round that number off to a nice, easy negative 10 meters per second squared. Okay? So from now on, any time you throw or drop an object, that will be the acceleration of the object. Let me say that again. That is super, super important. From now on in this class, any time you drop or throw an object, automatically you know the acceleration is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared because the object is in free fall. And as Galileo discovered, that is the acceleration of any object in free fall. OK? You should be aware that uh, all of this is only true on Earth. Uh, if you go to another planet, say the moon or Jupiter, uh, the acceleration of gravity is different. It's smaller on the moon because the moon is smaller than the Earth, and it's really big on Jupiter because Jupiter is bigger than the Earth. All right? So, again, this says what I said at the beginning, but please keep in mind that in free fall, there's no air resistance. All right? In the real world, there is air resistance. Uh, we will usually ignore air resistance because unless the object is either very light or moving very, very quickly, the air resistance doesn't have a significant effect on the object's motion. Okay? Uh, additionally, it's very difficult to calculate the effects of air resistance. So anyway, if an object is in free fall, any time you throw or drop an object, then we know the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared, which means every second the object's velocity decreases by 10 meters per second. Okay, Every second that it's in the air, the velocity is going to decrease by 10 meters a second. So um, all right, sorry about that. Somebody walked through my room. Uh, OK, so here we've got three examples of free fall. Uh, the only thing that's different in each of these three examples is the initial velocity. All right, so in the first example, Roy drops a ball from rest. So here's our example. Oops, let's try that again. Why does this hate me? There we go. In our first example, Roy drops a ball from rest. Uh, because he's dropping it from rest, that means that the vi is going to be zero. The initial velocity is zero. That's going to be true anytime something is dropped. Okay, so because it's being dropped, our initial velocity is zero, right? Because it's not moving when he lets go of it. After he does let go of it, the only force on it is gravity. So our acceleration is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared, which means every second the velocity decreases by 10 meters a second. So I can fill in this chart by just subtracting 10. The velocity is going to go negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50, and negative 60. The velocities are negative because the object is moving downward, right? And as it goes down, it goes down faster and faster and faster. Okay. All right. Now, in the second example, here, Roy is going to throw a ball up into the air. All right. Because he's throwing it up into the air, that means when he lets go of it, the instant he lets go of the ball, it's going to be moving at 30 meters a second. So that means that in this problem, our initial velocity is 30 meters per second. Okay, positive because he's throwing it up. Okay, now after he lets go of it, stupid bells. After he lets go of it, the only force on it is going to be gravity. So that means that our acceleration is negative 10 meters a second squared. Remember, that's true anytime you throw or drop an object. So that means our that means every second the object's velocity decreases by 10. So 30 minus 10 gives us 20, minus 10 gives us 10 meters a second, minus 10 gives us 0 meters a second, right? So it just stopped, right? That's the point where it hits, where it hits the top of its path. Now it's going to start coming down, right? 
because 0 minus 10 gives us negative 10, minus 10 is negative 20, and minus 10 is negative 30 meters a second. Okay, we're going to come back and revisit this chart here in a minute, but what I want you to notice is here the velocities are positive because it's going up, but it goes up slower and slower and slower until it stops. Then the velocities become negative, and they become more and more negative as it goes down faster and faster and faster. All right. So the only difference between these two problems, between what I just wrote in red and what I wrote in green, is that in the red one, where it drops it, the initial velocity is 0. And in the green one, the initial velocity is 30. All right. In this last example, which I'm going to do here in blue, Roy throws the ball down at 30 meters a second. So this time, our initial velocity is negative 30 meters a second. Right? Because at the instant that Roy lets go of it, it's already moving down at 30 meters a second. And after he lets go of it, gravity uh, is able to have an effect on it and pulls it down faster and faster. Right? Because our acceleration is still. That's frustrating. Uh, our acceleration is still negative 10 meters a second squared. So these velocities just go down by 10, just like we did in the other two examples. Okay, so all three of them have the same acceleration. The only difference is what that initial velocity is. All right, so finally, I do want to take a closer look at this middle chart here. Um, so in this one, Roy threw the ball up into the air. And basically, I just want to point out that the entire time the ball is in the air, the velocity is decreasing, right? Look at these numbers. If this was your bank account, you'd be freaked out, right? Because look, it's starting at 30. And then, uh-oh, $20, $10, $0, uh-oh, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, right? So the entire time the ball is in the air, the velocity is decreasing, right? Every second that it's in the air, the velocity decreases. Now, if we want to talk about speed, remember, speed doesn't include direction. So we'd have to get rid of these negative signs, right? So the speed would have all of these numbers being positive. Well, I guess zero can't be positive, but you wouldn't have any negatives, OK? So the speed is this. So it slows down on the way up, right? Because the speed goes from 30 to 0. Then it stops for a split second at the top of the path. And then it speeds up on the way down, right? Because the speed goes from 0 back down to 30, OK? And it turns out that it took three seconds to get to the top of the path and it takes three more seconds to come back down to its starting point. So the amount of time, if this is our dude, hello, whoa, Cyclops, <laughs> sorry, and he throws the ball up in the air, the ball is going to go up and then come back down. It turns out that if it takes three seconds to get there, then it takes three more seconds to come down for a total of six seconds in the air. All right, so... There we go. Free fall in under 15 minutes. So uh, go back, listen to it again. Take notes if you didn't already do it. Be ready for your quiz.